Today, you will see AI from a different perspective. We will take a look at how life intersects with technology. And the dance symbolizes how artificial intelligence processes information and learns. The idea of human-created objects coming to life was with us for a very long time. The ancient Greeks had myths about robots, and the Chinese and Egyptian engineers were building first automatons. But we had to wait for a very long time for actual artificial intelligence to rise. Actually, in 1956, at the Dartmouth College Conference, the very term AI was coined. At that time, Marvin Minsky, who was one of the leading scientists in artificial intelligence and a great specialist, said that creating a true AI wouldn't take longer than just one decade, perhaps one generation. But Marvin Minsky's words turned out to be a little bit too optimistic. In the 70s, the first artificial intelligence winter came. It was a period of decreased and almost frozen funding and lack of progress. After that, a decade later, another winter came. In the 80s, artificial intelligence as a nascent field was hit again. But in 1997, this very famous computer program called Deep Blue managed to win with Garry Kasparov in the game of chess. And that was already very different. A decade later, in 2011, IBM Watson won in the Geopardy game. And that marked a new era. Currently, with big amounts of data, huge computational powers, and new methods of data processing, we're finally at the time when artificial intelligence is becoming a general purpose technology. And that's just the beginning. Learning is crucial for us, living organisms, and it's equally crucial for artificial intelligence. But how does AI learn? Well, there are many different techniques, at least three that are most dominant. One of them is called supervised learning, and that's a, a technique that requires a lot of human intervention. We need a target value and we need historical data that are provided by humans. We have two sub-techniques here that matter most. One is regression. It can be very helpful, for instance, in predicting life expectancy in a given region, or to understand how popular would a certain advertising be. The other one is classification. And here, it can be helpful in detecting fraudulent transactions or, for instance, saying whether there is a turtle or a mouse on a picture. Another big technique in artificial intelligence is called unsupervised learning. And here, AI actually has a bit more autonomy. We don't have target values. It learns in uncertainty. We have two dominant techniques here. One is called dimensionality reduction, and it's a very important technique for visualizing big amounts of data that human eye cannot see. It cannot detect certain hidden features or insights that are inside that data that AI would be able to detect and human eye won't. 
Another technique is called clustering, and it's responsible for building the recommendation systems for services and products, and you can build systems that will be able to personalize on a level unseen before. The third and newest technique in artificial intelligence is called reinforcement learning. It's our enfant terrible, you can say. It's a technique in which AI is completely blind and learns by itself from mistakes and from experiences. It's very often used in robotics when you want to build a system that will over time learn to omit obstacles. Or in strategic games, when you want to build a system that will over time learn to play better, better, and at some point achieve the level of a champion. Our world is constantly changing, and we're adapting to it. But can artificial intelligence keep up? Actually, when you look at it from a technical perspective, machine learning today operates on two pipelines. One of them is responsible for learning and for taking a look into historical data to process information. The other one is responsible for prediction. Well, making sure that the future is kind of seen or that the behavior is improved. These two pipelines do not always work together. And because of that, sometimes AI can be very cumbersome at adapting. Now, on top of that, we have one more challenge. And that's related to the way information is processed and where it is processed. We're moving from the cloud and cloud infrastructure to edges. Computing edges, such as wearable technologies, sensors, and various small devices. Information is processed in the external physical world. Now, how can AI keep up with that? In the adaptive AI, those two pipelines that were separated come together. And now, the learning happens so much quicker. After more than seven decades marked by hoopla and sporadic dormancy, we have moved to algorithm-based machine learning, and we are increasingly focused on perception, reasoning, and generalization. AI is here to stay. There's virtually no major industry that would not use artificial intelligence or would not be affected by it from transportation and logistics to healthcare, education, and retail. AI, together with edge computing, IoT, will continue to transform the way goods and services are produced, distributed, and consumed. But the way AI is present in our lives today will be also shaped in the coming decades. The European Commission is ensuring that AI is human-centric and consistent with our values, as well as beneficial to our society. People should feel they can trust AI and that AI poses no harm to their fundamental rights. AI needs to be secure, transparent, and non-biased. It cannot discriminate against anyone 
To the contrary, it should increase the level of fairness in decision-making. Already now, we have the principles used for defining trustworthy AI, derived from the work of the high-level expert group. AI should become a friendly, general-purpose accessible technology. Citizens of all EU member states and global citizens should be able to reach their potential in AI, together. What is the purpose of artificial intelligence? The basic goal of AI is to provide mechanisms for decision-making. But some claim that the ultimate objective of AI is to overtake the work of human beings. I don't think this is true. It is true, however, that AI can help us in our work, increase our efficiency, and support us in routine tasks, as well as become helpful in those more complex ones. Yet others claim that the purpose of AI is for singularity to emerge. This hypothetical point in the near future where AI can exceed our intelligence. It's an overwhelming but exciting vision However, I do not think it is the purpose of AI either. The very primary purpose of artificial intelligence, at least the way I see it, goes back to its roots. It is to create a mirror for us humans and a way in which we can see ourselves better. Perhaps a way to better understand what it means to think, what it means to perceive, the world around us, and what it means to act in this very complex and noisy world. Who knows, in the future, maybe AI will lead the way for us to understand ourselves even better. <laughs>